In a recent interview, French Montana said, record labels are making money and profiting off rappers' lives with life insurance. Is it true? Now it's even crazier because really? they, they getting life insurance on artists. At least back then we didn't have that. You're praying on, you're praying on his death. You're praying on making millions on his death. Or are they being realistic though? Both. So let's break it down. French Montana accuses record labels of profiting off rappers' deaths with life insurance policies. But this goes way back into the 90s. 1998, Bushwick Bill blasts label over life insurance policy. In 2016, an article here from Front Row Insurance Brokers discusses the business aftermath of an artist death key man insurance. In this episode, we're gonna break down an insurance strategy that creates multi, multi, multi million dollar corporations, a lot of profits in order to protect their investments in their business. So the financial strategy, the insurance strategy that French Montana has beef with and issues with and many artists have issues with is number one, due to a lack of financial literacy, because this is what corporations do. This is what businesses do. So what is this insurance strategy? It's called key man life insurance strategy. There's no such thing as a key man policy. This is a strategy used by the life insurance industry, used by wise investors and owners of insuring a key man with a life insurance policy. Let me break it down. Number one, a corporation identifies a key man, a key woman, a key employee of the corporation. In this case, French Montana. Number two, the corporation applies for and owns and becomes the beneficiary of this key man life insurance strategy when it's all said and done. And the premium is paid for by the corporation. It means that entity is paying for this life insurance premium that is insuring this rapper or this artist or this celebrity or this key man or woman that in case something happens to them, that insurance company is paying the death benefit to the corporation that's paying the premiums. By the way, this cannot be done without written consent by the insured. So in other words, a lot of these artists, a lot of these celebrities, a lot of these folks going through moves in their life, excitement, they get signed by a label, an opportunity, a movie production company signs them, they don't look at the small print. Businesses that invest in artists, in actors, in business dealings, shoot, our company got funded with a $10 million seed capital back in 2017. Oscar De La Hoya came in and said, hey, we're gonna give your company 10 million bucks. Our own CEO had to get key man life insurance policy for 10 million dollars just in case something happened to our ceo just in case something happened to their investment in our company and they would be recouped their 10 million dollars without any questions being asked the life insurance policy would kick over that cash so therefore the investors would recruit their investment into said company so therefore they're not out of pocket losing money as an investment number three if the key man does pass away the corporation receives the debt benefit and the reimbursements for that company to invest in an artist, to invest in that actor, to invest in that employee, they're reimbursed for their expenses and protects a corporation from any losses. Financially speaking, it's a wise financial and insurance strategy that should exist to create and protect generational wealth and business succession for many, many years. So let me unpack this. This record label sends an advance to this artist. According to many different uh, labels, the typical advance would range anywhere between $500,000 and $2 million. Let me break that down even further. The typical breakdown of that is a $50,000 to a $350,000 advance to that artist. Recording, they're investing $150,000 to $500,000 for that artist to produce music. Video production, music videos, they're investing another fifty dollars to $300,000 for a music video. $50,000 to $150,000 on tour support. Marketing and promotion is anywhere between $200,000 and $700,000. So in the news, you hear record label signs, XYZ, artists for a million bucks, two million bucks, three million bucks. Wow, awesome. They're not really getting three million bucks. So think about this. This record label poured out $500,000 to $2 million to this artist who hasn't sold anything yet to get them set up to get them ready to roll. So in case something between that moment and the moment they actually start having this artist produce music, sell this music online, sell this music in stores, sell this music on tours, et cetera, et cetera, whatever goes on in an artist world to sell music, before this record label makes anything, they've already forked out this cash. And if something happens to this artist and that revenue never comes in through that investment, 
that $500,000 or $2 million policy reimburses that corporation, so therefore they're back to zero. And I'll just let you know, for most insurance companies, if they're going to underwrite a $500,000 to a $2 million policy, and the owner is different than the insured, they're going to ask some significant underwriting questions before they put a insurance policy in force. If they recognize that another entity is owning a life insurance company on a natural person, that life insurance company is gonna ask some serious questions about why that's happening. So certain questions like, well, why are you doing this to begin with? Okay, if so, if that's a valid purpose for key man policy, how much, what's the valuation? So let's say for the example, this record label, they invest, let's cut it in the middle. Let's, they invest a million bucks. We're signing this artist, million dollar contract. And the record label wants to protect its financial interests. They're gonna most likely use their replacement method. So in just in case something happens to this rapper, and they forked out a million dollars of cash and allocate this money. It's the rapper gets involved in a murder, gets killed doing whatever. That million dollars are replaced to the company, reimburses them, and replaces that investment. So therefore, they can find another artist to continue on that record label's business life. So back to this breakdown. The premium is paid for by the record label, the corporation. They go to an insurance company to get it issued and approved and put in force. In this situation, a $2 million death benefit is on an artist's life. The beneficiary is the record label or the corporation. That's basically the flow of a key man life insurance strategy. Tragic, yes, but it doesn't mean the record label has to go down for making an investment in a rapper or an artist that passed away. Now, it may sound kind of cruel for some of you. Wait on, I'll have some questions for you towards the end of the video, how this can affect your life from an individual personal standpoint. Let me give you some ideas here of what policies would best fit a key man life insurance strategy. Oftentimes people say it's term. For example, when our CEO was getting his uh, blood taken for a, a $10 million life insurance policy, is over a 10 year term. So high death benefit, least amount of life insurance, and at the end of 10 years, if nothing happens, the policy terminates. No more premiums paid, but yet no more death benefit to be issued after the 10 year mark. So for most parts, that is the least expensive form of life insurance, term insurance, is the least form of life insurance in terms of cost. There's another form of term insurance called return of premium term insurance. Return of premium means that if you pay into this life insurance policy, in this example, for 10 years for a key man life insurance policy, and nothing happens to the insured, the person the coverage is on, and 10 years and one day go by, and nothing happened to the insured, the payer, the owner who's paying these premiums gets reimbursed all the premiums that they've paid over that 10 year period. Another form is permanent insurance, where the premiums are a lot more expensive for the same coverage, but you're building equity inside this policy over a period of time. People often ask, is it better to rent or to own? Many of you are watching this video. Is it better to rent up an apartment or own a condo? Is it better to rent a house or to own a house for the long term? Well, if you're thinking long term, you think key man is gonna be a key man or woman in your business for a very long time, you might want to consider for this strategy, a permanent policy. Because other things can be built with inside a key man strategy outside of somebody just passing away. So permanent policies include whole life, universal life, and index universal life. So some final thoughts as I wrap stuff up. If these record labels, these financial entities are investing in artists and getting life insurance on them because they need to protect their interests, well, how come you're not doing that for your family? The big reason why generational wealth is not created because there's no financial head start. You'll see all these arguments online about what the best life insurance policy is, perm versus term. That's not the argument today. The argument today, especially in the multicultural middle income demographic, is that people have no life, life insurance, period. You don't have to be a rapper, you don't have to be a celebrity, you don't have to be an athlete, you don't have to be an actor. You could be mom, you could be dad, you could be entrepreneur. And if something happens to you, you wanna make sure your family is taken care of if something were to happen to you. Number two, insurance has both living benefits, not just death benefits. Uh, for example, I'm speaking next week to NAREP, National Associate of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals right here in Dallas. And I was asked to speak on what the benefits are of getting life insurance as a realtor. The financial strategy to protect your wealth, to create your wealth with equity inside, inside your home, a uh, key man in your real estate business in case something were to happen to you, how do you take your, how do you find somebody to replace what you're doing in your real estate investment empire? 
Uh, we have some equity repositioning analysis in that conversation. And guess what? If you're using a pertinent policy, you can find financial stress to be your own banker. By the way, check out this other video here, how Waka Flag is dumping a couple million dollars into his life insurance policy. So therefore, he's not dependent upon other banks to fund and finance his dreams and goals ever again. Check out this video. Number three, who are they? Who are the key people in your life? Who are the key people in your career? Who are the key people are in your business? What financial losses would you suffer or most spend to replace economic value for those that are in your family? One thing that I have for my parents, because they're matriarch and patriarchal leaders of our family. Guess what I got to my parents? Instead of putting money inside a non-matched 401k or a, a, a qualified retirement plan that gets taxed when I decide to take that money out, guess what do we have in our parents? Four, five, six, eight hundred, a thousand bucks going a month into a life insurance policy because they are key men and women in our lives. You can't tell me the economic value that they provide for our kids to see the joy of my father with his grandson in his lap, the joy that my mother has when she has her grandkids bouncing around and just playing around the house and the economic value of babysitting, the economic value of them being there for them to, to usher them through life experiences. What's the economic value of somebody that, that in their life to provide them the values and the principles? I want my children to grow up with. You see, that's why people buy life insurance. Ask yourself this question. If something were to happen today and you're not coming back, how long will your wife drain the 401k account? How quickly will your husband sell the house? How quickly will your kids burn through whatever you got in credit cards and inside the bank account, in your mutual funds, in your 401k? How quickly will they be in a financially destitute position where now they are dependent upon church, charity, government, and other family members to be financially sustainable? How long? But if you don't want your family to go through that burden, guess what you should consider putting into your financial foundation? A life insurance policy. And that's what corporations do. And that's why families should do it too as well. So that being said, what are your thoughts, your questions, your feedback? I'd love to know. Put it in the comment section below. And don't forget to watch these two other videos here that further unpack these strategies to implement it in your life. If you haven't done so already, you found value in this video, please consider hitting like. If you found value in a couple of other videos and you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. If you haven't purchased it yet, please consider purchasing Faith Made Millionaire. Overcome a lot of the misconceptions you have about money, God, faith, put it all together, make yourself a boatload of money so therefore you can be a better blessing to other people. Purchase your copy of Faith Made Millionaire today. With that being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.